I'm George. And I'm Annie. And we're here to tell you about the AMBC Revision DVD. Yes, the school has made a DVD for Revision. Yay! Yay! Basically, last year there was a lot of Year 11s who got told to revise but didn't know quite how. So this year, some of the Year 11 students have been asked to make a DVD. <laughs> Revision is not easy. It requires you to work and to take it seriously. Only way you can learn to remember is by repetition and reordering. Repetition is about repeating what you are trying to learn. Reordering is where you take the topic and rearrange the information. This is also called processing. This guide is for you and it's for your parents. It's designed to help you and your parents cope, help you reduce your stress levels, provide an example to follow, but not a rigid one. It will also help you get the most out of your undirected study time outside school. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, it will provide you with some examples of useful proven techniques and strategies for revision. And this is what it's all about. Getting you ready for the exam. get a pill that would make you better exams. Revision is a lot like life, you get out according to what you put in. You should set up a suitable space that is uncluttered, organised, well lit and comfortable. Make sure there are no distractions, no TV or radio or consoles, put your phone away, give your phone to a parent, no computer or internet unless you're using them for revision. Organise your time effectively. Set yourself smart targets. Make sure you stick to them. Be honest with yourself about this and use a calendar to plan. A useful method might be using a rule of three. Aim to do three revision sessions a day, allow three hours per session and each session should only cover a single subject but it should be broken down into either three or six topics. You may have noticed that this rule of three method adds up to nine hours. Yes, that's right. This is a method for use on study leave when you're not in school for six hours a day. During the school days, you should only do one session of three hours. Remember, revision takes time and requires hard work. This table shows one way of laying it out. Note that there are three breaks and you should use these breaks effectively, get up, stretch, walk around, get a drink or a snack, or use your phone if you really have to. How to make a foldable. Basically, a foldable is a sheet with a series of overlapping flaps that you can write on. They work a bit like big flashcards, but they always stay in order. <coughs> Using a textbook, you can reorder the information into the foldable. This means that you have processed it, which is important for remembering. The foldable can be used in lots of ways to repeatedly access the information. Repetition is really important for remembering. Obviously, the foldable method is not just for history. It can work for many subjects, especially those with overlapping and often complex themes. The term mind map is being used indiscriminately here to refer to all sorts of visual spatial methods of information representation. This includes, but is not limited to, spider diagrams, brainstorms and thought showers. The great advantage of this method for revision is that you can do it for any subject and any topic. It can be useful at the beginning of a topic or subject to get down on paper everything you know so that you can then begin to organise it and make sense of it. It can also be used during and after a topic to evaluate what you have learned and perhaps to reorganise your thoughts based on that learning. Using pictures 
adds meaning to a mind map. You may remember the quote that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, this should encourage you to use pictures when doing mind maps. They really do add information. Mind maps are really useful for revision. But it's simple. We could just use Tarsia. Whoa, whoa. Let's start with a difficult one. Okay, let's go. 3x add 5x minus 7x. It's simple. We'll start by adding 3x and 5x, which makes 8x minus 7x. 1x. And that can be written as? Just x. So we'll match them together. Whoa, it's really that simple. Yeah, let's carry on. Making your own flashcards. You can make your own flashcards by cutting out the cards and then writing on them. Or you can print a sheet of cards and then cut them out. Flashcards can be used in lots of ways to repeatedly interact with information and repetition is critical for remembering. Another use for flashcards is to double them up rather like dominoes. This allows you to use the flashcards in a different form of game. Making simple games out of revision materials is useful in several ways. First, it can reduce the monotony and create a bit of fun. Second, by creating the game you are reordering and processing the information. This itself helps revision because your brain retains what you process. And finally, the game will create an accessible method for repetition. And remember, repetition is the mother of all skill. The last technique we're going to look at is based on a method used in many professional learning situations. For example, surgeons have employed this method for decades and call it learn one, do one, teach one. And it is applied to the rapid dissemination of surgical technique amongst medical professionals. First, they learn by doing alongside another surgeon trained in the technique. Second, they undertake the procedure alone under light supervision. Finally, they teach the technique to another surgeon. This final process recognizes a truth long understood by teachers. Teaching a skill or topic reinforces one's own understanding and learning. The natural extension of this technique then, for revision purposes, is for you to teach the topic you are revising. You should not teach it to a classmate who may already have learned this. You should instead teach it to someone who does not know this, preferably a parent, guardian, grandparent, or similar person who may ask pertinent questions. When used correctly, this is one of the best revision techniques you could use as it has a proven track record. There are two main exam boards, OCR and AQA. Finding their websites is straightforward. The best resource they can both offer is the past papers section. In the next segment, you will hear a podcast explaining accessing the OCR past papers for media. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through going to the OCR website. And from the OCR website, you could look at subjects and qualifications, but your best bet is looking at the past papers. If you click on past papers, 2016 is not going to give you the, the best information because you may not have access to interchange. So if you scroll down a little bit and we're going to enter a subject. I've chosen uh, Creative Eye Media because I know exactly which one this is. Um, it's a Cambridge Nationals level 1-2 and this is then going to take me through to where the past papers are. 20 past papers. Let's just, for example, look at the January series of 2014. Examiner's report, mark scheme, modified papers, question paper, and question paper. Uh, these are uh, modified, so you want to go to the modified question papers. They're the ones that have had all the corrections done. Once you've got those, you download them, double click on those, and they will open in PDF or in Ac Adobe Acrobat. So here is the exam paper for R081. Uh, for Cambridge Nationals. 
and it starts out with a scenario and then a series of questions. The questions start out very simple, very straightforward, and then they build up over time to being slightly more complex and requiring longer, more explanatory answers. Having done the questions, you can then go and look for the answers, and these are in the mark scheme, along with annotation and explanations and guidance uh, for you to mark the work that you have completed. While it's perfectly all right for you to mark your own work in this way, it's probably preferable that you have someone else do it, like a parent or a sibling. The last item that's worth mentioning here is the uh, exam reports or reports of examiners, uh, and they will report on the various units that were completed for uh, coursework, but they will also report quite extensively on the exam and they will go through where people made mistakes or where a lot of people had some misunderstandings. This is very, very helpful if you have the time to read and absorb. So there it is. We hope you found this helpful. But remember this, any revision is better than none. Don't panic, get proper rest and sleep, eat a healthy diet and hydrate. On behalf of all of us at AMBC, good luck and thank you for listening.